I've always been a writer. As soon as I could put words together, I was writing poetry. And then as I got a little older, little short stories, uh, I was the editor of the school paper at age 12 and self-published constantly. <laughs> so I, I've always been doing it. It was right after I got married that, uh, 21, that I said, I have to learn how to be a professional writer. And I started to take writing courses because you have to know the craft of writing as well as have a certain talent for it. Why do you choose suspense thrillers? My first two short stories were suspense only because I had an idea for them. And then I did what we used to call the home story, the family story. For magazines like McCall's and Red Book and Saturday Evening Post, I did, uh, I were, was in them and uh, that kind of, of story. But then when I did the book, the first one was an autobi not an autobiography, clearly, a biographical novel about George Washington because I had written about him in my historical radio show. And that went nowhere, but it was published. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, somebody was willing to publish it. Maybe nobody read it, but somebody was willing to publish it. I thought it was a triumph. And I said, now let's, one, let's try to write a book that will sell. And since I love to read mysteries, I thought, why not try a suspense story? Mm -hmm. Where do you get the ideas for your books? All over. I think this present when Moonlight Becomes You, maybe the germ for that was set way back because my mother-in-law, who, who was an eminently sensible woman, would occasionally have a nightmare, always the same one, that she, she woke up and she was in a casket and she sat up and she was in a funeral home surrounded by dead bodies. And she used to say to us, if you people put me in a funeral home, you're out of the will. And I understand now the basis for it because she, she was an old, older mother to my husband and her mother was 45 when she was born so her mother was mid-1800s and at that time and was raised in England many people during a plague or a terrible illness that swept the city they were so quick to bury the bodies for fear of contamination that they know people were buried alive they had found caskets clawed and I think her mother told her those stories and then when I came across this little item of about caskets where people had air vents in them and bells on them, the wealthy Victorians, and they paid someone to walk the graveyard for a week so that if they woke up and they weren't dead, there was air to breathe and they would have a string on their finger and ring the bell. And then the bell watcher would get help and, and save them. I thought, oh wow, oh isn't that sweet? I know I can do something good with that. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about your upcoming novel and when it will be out? Yes, in fact, I was working on it today on my little ThinkPad, and it's called My Gal Sunday. It is a new couple I have invented, uh, created, a former president of the United States who's 44 years old. He'd been elected at 35 and 39. He has one of the great private fortunes, and he's gorgeous. Everyone is in love with him. And the last night he's president, he meets an incoming congresswoman. 32-year-old Sandra O'Brien. Her father is a motorman from Jersey City, and she had won the election in a stunning upset. She had been a public defender. And they were married six weeks later, and now eight months later, they're solving crimes.